a fellow named Mochi and a fellow named Dirk. Mochi's at the top. Mochi is leading four to two. Once you get six points, it's over. So if Mochi wins both the PR and the match, this is over. Otherwise, there's going to be another match. I can't tell you. We can only stream one match at a time here. I can't tell you if the last match will be that match or if we'll have the match between Dagfin and Zizi because they're still playing as well, and that's up in the air. And that match, uh, those matches, it's just been an amazing ZZ show. He's slightly ahead. I think he's winning three and two. But his PRs in the first three matches, one was 2.0, I believe, and the other two were under two. I mean, that is amazing for anybody in the world. And uh, I'm just so proud of him. He's, and why am I proud of him? Because I taught him nothing. Uh, and he did this on his own without my help. Although I will take a little credit. Falafel was his teacher and his mentor. And Falafel and I worked together for quite a long time, uh, give, teaching together. And I gave a lot of my material to Falafel. He's used a lot of my material to teach. And he's even when he was going uh, on his own and coaching people, he asked me to send him some PowerPoints and some of the material that I have. And of course, I, I shared it with him for a price. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give it free. Uh, I really appreciate all your comments. You seem to be enjoying the commentary. Uh, I wish I had more great guests sitting next to me, but almost all of the great players that are here are in the middle of matches that I had to forfeit because I'd rather be doing this than playing. So here we go. Uh, we're starting out, and Mochi could end this whole uh, competition between him and Dirk if he wins both here, and he has outplayed Dirk most of the time, but not all the time. They're not playing this well as the other two, as Dogfin and Azizi, as far as PR goes, but that might be a function of the fact that they've had more difficult decisions to make. Uh, again, I appreciate all the comments. I, everybody seems to be having fun. Um, and we have a little bit of an irregular schedule because of Wi-Fi and technical difficulties, but um, overall, I think it goes well. And again, you can once the match is recorded on YouTube, you can watch it anytime. I know there's a lot of people who think I waste a lot of time talking about the players in the match and they'd rather I spend more time about me, but I'm gonna ignore that and, and try and focus a little bit more on the match in spite of those wonderful comments. Okay, five, four, make the ace point. Unheard of years ago, absolutely unheard of, ridiculous play. You don't make the ace point. The style was to play pure, but it was right here. Absolutely right to make the ace point. He hasn't. Until you pick up the dice, until you hit the clock, it's not over. And I don't know how, but Mochi somehow found the right play. Ah, this is a very good end read number. Anchor, anchor means you made a point in your opponent's board. Very critical at that point to do that. A simple run. Okay, I get, you got to like four, three. Ha, why isn't it? One down and one in. I, uh, that's my play. You get the most flexibility. You don't want to get hit with a seven. Uh, three, two doesn't hit. Wow. I might play this real big and bring two down. I don't like stacking. You could bring one down and one in. I'm, the, I'm a big player here. I play two down. I have no idea what's right, but I know that I do. Ooh. He brings one down. Hey, two down is the computer play. We just saw it. Maybe Extreme Bramman heard me and, and just is copying me. Could that be? Am I that ecocentric? Yeah. What's your point? <laughs> no, two down is best. You need those builders. You need those builders. You don't want to get hit. It's not nice. It's risk and reward. It's worth the risk. It's not that bad to play one down and in, but you lose the builders for the bar. I, I really didn't like this play at all. It's not my style to stack. I'm gonna have to have a talk with Mochi after this about that play. I, I will, I'll talk to him. There's even a small chance he might even listen to me. Nah, nah, that's not a, that's not a thing. Okay. This is very, very interesting. Double twos. There's been so many 
there's an email I get all the time with a double two play from Illinois, my old friends there. And uh, I even have a couple of PowerPoints and videos on quizzes of how to play double two. There's just so many variations, so many things you can do here. Making the bar or making the four are obviously the two questions and making the four uh, is certainly better here, but not that much, it's close. But he found the right play. That one play Mochi got wrong has cost him in the PR. And believe me, at the end of the match, all Mochi looks at and all he cares about is how he played. Winning and losing is, that's somewhat up to the dice. In the short run, it's up to the dice. In the long run, the better you play, the more you win. And Mochi is living proof of that theory. He wins more than most because he plays better than most. Ah, do you burn a checker here? It doesn't matter. What, when Extreme Gammon shows you that they're all the plays are the same, it means it's double pass no matter what you play. And I think Mochi knows that. I'm sure Mochi knows that. So why do you bother? You want to make it look like it matters, so hopefully the guy won't double you. Okay. Double pass. This is not a cube that Dirk is going to miss. And this is not a take that Mochi's going to take. But not, pretty easy decision. That was a quick, easy decision. Okay. So what do you do when every play you know you're going to pass? You don't act like it. You don't care. You just make it look as like you really are trying to find the right play and hope he doesn't double. Now, hoping that a Dirk or a Mochi won't double when they should, that's a pretty useless waste of time. But when you're playing Phil Simborg, you're not wasting your time by by playing a little poker with me. I've been out, I've been snookered before at the snooker table as well as the backgammon table. Somebody asked, what is, oh, Rory asked, what's the status of ZZ and Dagfin? I think it's, the points are uh, ZZ slightly ahead of Dagfin. And they're playing, they start in a couple of minutes and I'll bring you the update. But ZZ, I know he's won the three points just on PR in three matches. Unbelievable play. Dagfin's no slouch either. Yeah, five to three, uh, ZZ is winning. Okay, let's focus on this match. Out to the bar, puts pressure on the outside checkers, gives you a chance to hit back if you get hit. It hurts to get hit, but there's a lot of return shots, almost half the deck, almost half the rolls will hit back if he hits loose on the bar. That's one of the reasons that going out to the 18 is always uh, an option, but it's wrong here. <laughs> it was my play. I was going out. I hate the stack. I hate this stack. I'm going out. Come on. Mochi's not sure. If he's not sure, it could be wrong. He's looking at the hit off the ace. Oh, look at that. That ugly, terrible hit off the ace play is really close. Might even be right with a rollout. So he made my play. I go out to the bar. Now I hit back. Is he going to hit twice? Do you hit twice here? I'm always tempted to hit twice. I learned that from Carter. Hit twice and pray. Slightly wrong to hit twice here. Make Mochi's showing the right play right now, but it's not big. When I hit twice, you're pretty much leaving it to luck, and I like that. I have a better chance to win when you leave it to luck. Mochi doesn't leave anything to luck. Neither does Dirk, and this is Dirk's play, by the way. Very close, not, not terrible. Double three is always a good roll especially when you can make the five point, which you do instantly. You make the five and then look around. Double six is not always a good roll, but it ain't bad here. Gonna hit two, make a point and hit two, that's me. That's me. 
that be me. He does. Boy, I've learned so much from Dirk over the years and Mochi. And nice, nice entry with a hit. One six, not his best. Again, out to the bar, you want to have a robust game with lots of options. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're thinking about the cube here. Wouldn't enter my mind. Okay, oh, he's thinking about the roll. Okay. Four three is a nice hit. It's also an anchor, but the hit's almost always better. Especially after you've made your two point. Dirk's made his two point. He really prefers to play a hitting game. That's more of his game plan when you make a low point in your board. You don't have a good priming game option. Easy, easy, simple run play. Mochi is probably checking on the race. Race is close. Dirk has the lead in the race, and so he's going to play more conservatively. These are fewer shots. This is clearly the right play. Nothing else looked very reasonable. And he is rewarded by not getting hit. And he's rewarded with a two. And the four, a bad player immediately goes to the two point here, throws the check away, and it's a tiny error in this case because getting hit is not good when you're up in the race. So it's very, very close. I, I wouldn't have even thought of making going to the two point. Uh, that, that's my play instantly, just out of general theme of not throwing checkers away. I heard that good players don't throw checkers away, so I'm trying to imitate a good player. If you can't do it, fake it. And you split two to one. You're winning the race. You're winning the race. That's it. Okay. Look at this. We're playing at 1.4 and 2. Are we watching? Are we privileged to be watching two of the greats? Two of the all time greats? And I would put Dirk in that category. One of the all time greats. Mochi, we know. That's a no-brainer. Mochi may be the goat. We don't know. I wouldn't go quite that far yet. He certainly has held the giant spot longer than anybody. And certainly he's, he's the lead for that, but who knows? I don't know what Mac or Gus or a few others might have accomplished or Wilcox if they stayed in the game. I got a bunch of candidates that could easily be called all time greats. And I'm sure I'm leaving out people like Leverman and Grandel. And hey, here's a quiz for you. Who's won the World Championship, the World Cup, and the Nordic Open? There's only one guy that's done that. My really good buddy and one of the most interesting and fun people in the world, not just in backgammon. You know who that is? I'm watching the chat. Anybody know the answer? Well, I'm not going to tell you if nobody knows. This guy's still a force today. You got to watch out for him. He doesn't play a lot of tournaments. He's too busy doing other things. It's not Billy Horan. The World Cup was in Dallas. The World Championship and the Nordic Open. 
at the time, the three most prestigious events. Now I would add Cyprus and a couple of others. Okay. The answer is Mike Spabadny. If I were to find one, ask one person to write a book, a true story on everything they know about great backgammon stories, he would be my pick. I think he should write it and have it published posthumously because uh, he says he certainly can't do it while he's alive or, some, or the people involved would kill him. <laughs> no, it's not Joe Russell. Joe Russell won the world championship and he came in second against Jordan Grandstead in the world championship. But I, I don't know if Joe won the Nordic or the World Cup. So nobody guessed Mike Spavadi. I'm sure I wasn't the only one that knows that story, but knows that quiz. All right, they're playing back, Evan, here. Let's get back to the game. It's a cube. You only uh, can win this probably with a, with a. Oh no! It's a the, the race is pretty close. I would not have doubled that. I have to. I didn't see the XG feed. I would not have doubled, knowing that the race is that close. Plus, I could leave a shot. So I would have missed that cube. I'm sure I'm wrong. I didn't see the XG feed. If Bochi doubled, it must be a double. It's not a score thing. One to nothing is going to affect it particularly. And of course, Dirk rolled very, very well. He's going to be thinking about a recube soon. Having the cube in a race is worth about 18%. Not quite that much at this shorter race, but it was worth, it's still maybe worth 14 or 15% extra value because you don't have to win the game. You don't have to get your checkers off first to win the game. All you have to do is become a big enough favorite and win with the cube. He's close. He's getting there. Okay, he's up a pip and on roll. Up two pips and on roll. But fewer checkers off. I don't think this is quite a recue. That was a good roll. If Mochi rolls poorly here, you might have a cue. Oh, that's not poorly. That's That's pretty good. Mochi, Mochi roll a 2-1 or something really low, Dirk would have a recube. Again, Mochi should perform here. He might see a cube if he rolls really badly. That's really good. That's really goodly. Okay. Obviously, Mochi had a good cube in hindsight. But look at this. He's still not gin by a long shot, even after those double fives. Wow. Mochi's rolling really well here. That's a killer to not take two checkers off. And there's still hope. You've ever heard of a guy rolling a 2-1 and then doubles? That, you think that never happens? Happens all the time on the, on, the, on the computer, doesn't it? We all know it never happens up with that real dice. Whew. All right. Mochi's right in this game, winning 2-1. to one. I would not have doubled there. I, I didn't see the XG feed. I'm sure it's right if Mochi did it, but I would not have doubled up only seven pips and maybe leaving a shot. The one thing I know is how easy a take it was. And that's one thing that makes me not want to double. Was it a double? Did anybody see the XG feed there? Please let me know if it was a double. It was a double. Thank you, Rory. 0 0.032, very small double. And Mochi got it. Thank you, Rory. I appreciate the help. Once in a while, Rory can actually be helpful. You never know, you know? I really hope to make it to the Chicago Open because it's a well-run, wonderful tournament. And people like Rory, who work so hard, deserve to be supported, even though... So regardless, you should support Rory and his tournament. 
and I'm going to try to make it. I've got some conflicts I may have to work out. Of course, coming to Chicago and seeing my family is secondary. Back end is always first. When you see that six, you know you got something good here. Do you make the two point? Do you hit two? Making the two point or hitting two is are the two choices, and they're very close. It's a matter of style. I don't have any style, but I would have hit two. Again, I learned this from Carter. I always hit two. Not a big difference between the two plays. Plenty of time on the clock. It really doesn't matter PR wise between these two plays. Okay, Dirk, <clears throat> what about Dirk's law? Which one of the two is most likely to be a blunder? The answer is neither one of them are close to a blunder. Now what do you do, Dirk? I need Dirk's law number two. What do you do when Dirk's law doesn't work? When you got a play that neither one could possibly be a blunder. Then you use MCV, most common variation. It's a Paul McGrill uh, concept that he taught my mentor, Perry, and Perry really perfected it and honed that whole idea of most common variation. What's most likely to happen if you do this or that and weigh the, weigh the differences and try and put a numerical value on it. And if you can do that, you would not be sitting on the side of the screen that I'm on You'd be sitting on the other side. <clears throat> You'd be on Mochi's seat or Dirk's seat. Okay. <clears throat> this race is, <clears throat> is much more interesting after double fives than a hit. <clears throat> Before that, it wasn't, uh, wasn't close, but now he's back in the race. This looks like a pretty good play to me. The hit's automatic, and then you find the other, the rest of the play. I'd have to go back and see the original to come up with my options very well. But you can see the XG feed. Mm -hmm. This is one time you don't make the five point. You're leaving too many blots. <clears throat> and with your opponent with the four point acre, the five point isn't quite as valuable. So making the five point here is wrong. So remember those saying, I always make the five point except when you shouldn't. It's hard not to make the five point. Three, one, isn't this automatic? What am I missing here? Oh, this is Mochi's, Mochi's roll. Again, this is a situation where it's wrong to make the five point. The hitting play is right for one reason, you're to unstack. For another reason, to take away half his roll. He's got that nice builder on the 11 he can do something with. Mochi chose to make the five point, which was again at that point wrong. And his PR is severely punched. He might be playing more than 1.0 1, 1. now. Yeah, he's playing in the twos. How terrible. Jeez. Disgusting to play over, over two PR. From what we've been seeing this week, it's amazing. PRs are unbelievable. I don't think there's ever been a competition, including UBC competition, that had this many matches played under two and then under three. Unbelievable play. This game has progressed. Thank you, Xavier and XG.
I think that's the biggest reason for it. If you're a serious player and you don't have XG, you're not going to learn this game. You're not going to get to the, a decent level. But at any level of play, it'll help you. www.extremegamma.com. And there's a drop-down screen that says, where did you learn about it? From the internet, from a friend, or from Phil Simborg? So I sort of have a preference of what you might check. And it might have a financial impact on me. So think about that. Do it for Phil. It only costs you 60 bucks, but if you join your federation, most of them have a 20% discount. And if you're not a member of a federation, you're missing out tremendously, especially the USBGF. The US Federation has so many value, so much value. And even if you never take advantage of the magazines, the articles, and the videos, you're just supporting the game by supporting the Federation. Thank you, Chiva, for all you've done for pushing Federations all over the world, including pushing me and Carter and others in the United States to start the USBGF. Had a lot of help from Chuck Bauer as well. But Chiva has really had a lot to do with making Federations a thing. And these federations are representatives of the players. So again, I saw Chiva today. So happy to see him looking good. Can't see the dice. Sorry. It's a two something. Is that a two one? Yeah. That play is pretty clear to me. There's a couple of other close plays. A dance. We're nowhere near cube action here, not with those three checkers back. Ooh, outside anchor. Which one? Isn't that interesting? You can make either the 18 or the 17. And it's far better to make the 17. Why? Because you're winning the race and you don't want to hold your opponent. You want to get out of there. So always think game plan. Always have that steer you. It's going to be a hit here. See, no way he's not going to hit here. 27 numbers plus combinations. It's an automatic hit. 4-2. Oops. He can hit, but now what? Hitting leaves a lot of shots. And you're way, way, way up in the race. So like I said, you don't hit here. <laughs> I wish this wasn't recorded. I would sound so smart. If I could take away all the, all the wrong things I said before, I'd probably still be married. That was a sound play. Very, very good. Again, when you're up in the race, you race. He's up 39 pips in the race. Don't leave shots. A 1-5 back game sucks. It's lousy. You try to get off of it whenever you could. If he'd have rolled a six there, there's no question he comes out to the bar and gets off the ace point. You just don't want to be there. It's a very, very hard game to win when you get gammon too much. But he's not stuck there. I mean, Mochi's not committed to playing a 1-5 back game. He can always get off of it. He's got, he's got a few rolls that will get him off of it soon. 6-3. Yep. I don't see a, an alternative. Did I tell you he's coming out with the 6? Did I tell you that? And it's clearly right. No. No, you make the 18. Mochi. Oh me, oh my. That was a that was a slip, but he did it pretty fast. Mochi usually doesn't play that fast. That was really wrong. You don't want to play in one five back game and holding the 18 point to go forward. Good for your timing, good for it. I can't I can't believe he played it wrong so fast. Wow. Even I would have gotten that one right by making the 18 point. Even me. Six, five. You could put two on the two and the three. That's pretty ugly. You could go 
both checkers from the back, leaving a six and a seven. You don't want to get hit here. I think you make the ugly play. Yep, that's my play, Dirk. Make that ugly play. Let's see what Mochi's going to do with his checkers. If he lifts his checker on the 12 point, then you've got outfield control and maybe can play around in the outfield. So I think you have to do this. The alternative is just too ugly, and getting hit here is too too uh, too hurtful. Yep, this is what's going to happen. That's why he doesn't volunteer last time, because Mochi's got to move. He doesn't have a lot of good moves other than clearing the blot on the 12. Then Dirk is free to move those checkers in the outfield with not that much risk. He'll, he won't leave it direct, probably. Yeah, this is the only play. It actually isn't that bad to, again, come off the back. Mochi, you haven't had my lesson on how bad it is to play a 1-5 game. If you did, you might consider coming off the back, which isn't a bad play here. It's not the best play. But he certainly should have done it earlier when he had the chance to make the 18 acre. I have a set of rules of thumb for when I, uh, when I double back games. And my rule of thumb is you double the back, one five back game quickly and you drop fast. All right, that's a few shots, but it's still, still he's happy to take the chance now with the cube in the center. Five one's nothing. Makes a nice point, I guess. What's the race? Hmm, he's up a little bit. 50 something pips. Even with the gap, I think I would have considered doubling there. I just hate the one five back end. But Dirk rolled fast without the cube. Because you're not gonna get, a, get hit, not in the outfield. Oh, he got hit in the outfield. Look at that. How smart was Dirk not to double? You often double when it's just this situation with the ace point open. I like this cube here. It's a real big pressure cube. I'm not sure about the take. So that's the number one reason I doubled. Got a nice five point board, you're threatening. Okay. Wow, the cube says four, that's a good trick. I've had that pulled on me before. I'm sure that was unintentional. Oh, that's not, it didn't say four. That's the symbol of the of galaxy, I believe. Does everybody know how fortunate we are to have Mark Olson and his crew to bring us back M and Galaxy, the world championships in the UBC, all the videos that Mark does, he's an incredible teacher and writer. And uh, he was smart enough to play in this event and hire Mate to run it, who's doing an incredible job, incredible team. And he's also brilliant enough to hire me to do the commentary. I mean, this guy's got to be smart. He's done so much for the game. I really admire the guy, but he's a nice guy, too. He's just a very nice, pleasant guy to be with. Okay, 6 1. Whew. Hit, make the bar, play safe. Well, in the early game, I always say, can I hit or can I make a point? Or can I play strategically and hitting comes first? Where are we on the PRs? I'm gonna check on that after this play. This is the right play by far. Very good, Dirk. Where are the PRs? Look at this, 1.5 and 2.4. And Dirk is winning, he needs to win. He needs to improve his PR and he needs to get the points. And he's doing the job. I talked to Dirk right before the match. He's, he hadn't been feeling too well. He hadn't been sleeping too well. I said, I put my hand on him. He's, we were good friends. I said, Dirk, just have fun. Just relax and have fun. He said, thanks, that's good advice. And I plan to. Dirk and I go back a long way. We've had a lot of really great experiences together. Not as much as Mochi. Mochi and I have traveled a lot, done boot camps all over all over the world, done lectures together. I just love the guy. But I love Dirk too. 
What I want to see is that they play, both play really well and enjoy it, and whoever wins, wins. Okay, this is not a double. It's getting close, partially because of the score. I think if the score were reversed, this would be a clear double for Mochi. And if he doubles, it's not a big error. Look at that. At plus plus, it's only 0.018. Okay. So you can't fault him if he doubles. Big take. Big, big take, especially when you're losing four away, six away. Okay, nice double. He might make a mistake, but not Dirk. No way. Not, not a bad double. It's a pressure double. But again, how many people when they're leading get way too shy with the cube? Not Mochi. Mochi does what he thinks is right with the cube. And he doesn't get shook up by wanting to be more conservative because you're winning or losing. None of those are factors for him. The only factor in is what's, to, what's, how does it affect the right decision. Okay, 6-1. Uh, you're not volunteering. You're not sliding the bar. You're not coming out. You're not stacking. You should play 11-4. Okay. Eliminate a blot and get a builder. That's why 11-4 would be a little bit better. I, for some reason, Mochi, I think, likes that checker on the 11 in case Dirk were to come out. But because he has the blot on the 11, Dirk ain't coming out. <laughs> or up. Okay. Five, three. Well, it makes the eight point, but it leaves a direct shot. Ah, the hit. The hit. And the hit is right. Anything but hitting is very, very bad. You, you got him outboarded. If you don't hit, he, he's going to do some damage. And he's not going to, if he, if you hit him, he can't possibly hurt you. Oh, he might possibly hurt you if he rolls double ones. This is the right play to come up to the 23. He's shooting. He's the shooter, not the shooty. He's the one that has a shot at that blot if Mochi doesn't perform. Sometimes you have to make the ugly play, stack it up and not leave the shot. Remember Matt Cohn Geyer's advice, never leave a shot. Never, never, ever, right, Matt? Never, ever left a shot in his life. Good advice, though. He also gave me advice on the bear off, which I took to heart. He says, always peel. Just take a checker off. He says, the number one mistake he sees more than anything else in bearing off is not taking checkers off when you can. Even if it might leave a couple more shots later, it's still often right because a checker off is a checker off. You get increases your gammons and your wins. Okay. Because of the score, Dirk is thinking, I'm feeling a little frisky here. He might give this cube. I think it's an easy take because of the anchor. You don't get gammon that much. The cube on two, if Mochi were to really get lucky and turn it around, he could win the entire match. Because <coughs> he's got these four away. I wish they showed the away score instead of the real score. That's how. Backgammon should be scored. That's how my machine works, how my XG works. It is a redouble and a take. I mean, it, yeah, it's a redouble and a take. Sorry, it's a recube. I mean, got, got a little mixed up on winning the match with the cube, with the, with the gammon. Okay, very good recube, very good take. And these are courageous moves by both players. This takes guts. Mochi wins the match if he just wins this game. And that's why his upside is so good, even though he was an underdog. <clears throat> if he loses, he's not happy. Now, he doesn't like being down five to three, but winning, winning is everything. He wins the whole shebang. Look at those PRs. Dirk is playing this, the best he's played uh, in this uh, semifinals at 1.3. Mochi ho hum, just another 2.3 game. That's his average. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ho hum.
Hmm. XG shows the hit here, which I'm not sure I would have done. Wow. Wow. There's a blunder for Mochi. That's going to cost him on the PR. Still playing under three. <laughs> when I get cost on the PR, it puts me on 14. Nice entering number. Wow. That's big coming in and hitting there. That's very big. We know he's going to come in and hit. I come in with the three and hit with the one. That's the right play. You want to get that checker up on the three point on the other side of the board so you can get out of there in case you get missed here. Oh, big, big miss. This is really big for dirt. It's going to cover, come in, got a six prime. Wow, this is a big, big turnaround for Dirk. He would certainly love a four. That ain't so bad. <laughs> the world's longest prime, seven prime. Then you roll a one next time and play two to one. Yep. The best way to counter a prime is to counter prime. Wilcox Snelling said that on my Facebook page a week ago and got the right play, of course. And that was the concept. This anchor is very, very good for Mochi. <laughs> we, we forgot to mention when the cube is on four, if Mochi gets gammoned here, he loses the match. So making that anchor was a very, very good thing. Justin, lovely heavy back, having you back. You're in an exciting point. There's a four cube here, and Mochi's winning three to one, four away, six away. Did you win your match? I did win this one. Oh, that's amazing. You won your match. My opponent was also very good again. Uh huh. So, my voice is tired. I'm going to leave this to you for two reasons, but I want you in the picture. All right. I'm just, I came in here just to watch, but if you make me talk, I'm I'll making you work, and I'll buy you a cup of coffee for doing it. Oh, how about a beer? You got oh, it. Did he just hit that? He just hit that. Why? <laughs> just when you think the counter prime might happen. I mean, you don't think I don't think if Dirk should try for a game, and it shortens the match too much. It's not as much fun for us as spectators. He, doesn't he care about us? All he wants to do is win the damn match. Oh, He's so wow. selfish. If he wins it, oh, wow. Yes, he can win the match. And his PR, it's his PR, right now. That yeah, would that, would, that would tie up this match and leave, put everything on one match to see who, who gets to play in the finals on Friday. That sounds actually quite fun because it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, on Friday, that's tomorrow, we're going to start at 10 o'clock and we're going to play continuous matches, stream continuously from 10 o'clock with a little bit of a break, either 15 minutes or a half hour, up to the players, we'll let them decide. Starting tomorrow? Starting tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And hopefully we can get it all done in the afternoon and maybe save one match for the evening. There are gonna be six matches tomorrow. So that's why we're gonna start at 10 and I just do, keep going. I do not volunteer at one six. It's not my style. I would volunteer, he's on the roof and you really, really want to maximize gammons here. Wins the gammon, he wins the match. This whole thing yeah, would be tied up. You don't win a gammon if you get hit. <laughs> mm. I mean, you might. You might still, but. Probably you don't. Yeah, you, your main goal is to not get hit. I like this play a lot. It's wrong, but that's one of the reasons I like it so much. I love, I like that configuration of, of the uh, odd checkers on the six and four. With yeah. two on the five. This play doesn't leave a shot with double fives, though, mm -hmm. which I think has a huge upside. What's surprising is when you have a check around the six and four and you roll a five something, you often clear the five point. Mm -mm. That's why you shouldn't have made that other play. You should have made my play. Yeah, yeah. Told you so. Wow. wow, what a sequence. What a sequence. Is he going to roll a six? Do we have a bet? No, he's going to roll a one five. Oh, man, that's still equal six in my mind. <laughs> a four two is, is what I would roll. Oh, one two. Okay. There's still chances. Mochi's not giving up. He's not going to waste the pip. He still hopes he'll get lucky and get off this gamut without a shot by rolling big dumbers. But 
his best chance is, is get a shot. He's not likely to run off the scanner, it seems like. And if the PR stays where it's at, we're going to see us. We're going to see a final match with these two. The problem is, is that even if Mochi gets a shot and hits the shot, he still loses on PR unless he gets another game out of this because the containment's going to be so hard, and Dirk's going to have no more real decisions. Uh huh. You know, containment games are PR killers. Right, and even if Mochi plays the containment game perfect. XG is going to ding him because XG isn't perfect. Well, right? that, that's also interesting. If he does play it perfectly. By whose I, definition is he playing perfectly? Well. Not by XG's. That's the point. Well, Xavier admits his containment games and back games are not perfect. We, we had an interview with Xavier online not that long ago, and he came right out and said it. But we're working on it. We're going to improve that in the future. And the one game he, that's horrible at and he's not going to work on it is the snake. He says it just doesn't happen enough to be worth the computer power to make the snake work. How much power would it take? I, I don't know. I have no idea. He says it's a lot. I believe him. He says it's a lot. 6-3. Very good. The only way he gets off the scanner is if he gets a shot and hits it. Yep. I'm going to take full credit for Dirk's win. I told him to relax and have fun. It's me. This is this is me that's getting him to win. Because I'm talking a little bit too soon, maybe. Yeah, don't jinx the man. <laughs> I don't believe in jinxing. I do. Superstition brings bad luck. I walk under ladders intentionally. That's the kind of guy. Oh, oh, I think I jinxed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Did I jinx him? Is this, this is my fault? No, I didn't. He didn't hit him. There's a part of me that wanted him to miss so we could have the fifth match and be a tie. How exciting is that? Stay tuned. It ain't over. This one ain't over, though. This one ain't over. All Mochi wants to do is get that last shot and save the game. Do you go with one or not here? I think I would stay. You stay with both? Yeah. The problem with running is like, I guess. Pick and pass and stuff? Yeah. All right, now you go with one for the Clue Classique. This is where you roll double ones. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> you go with one. Now, for those of you who may not be aware, what happens, do you think, if Dirk were to roll a one on this next roll, other than double ones? It's a double shot. And Mochi, if he picks up both, could easily win the game. It's not, this, is not just about, this is not just about saving the game anymore. If he picks up both, he'll be a favorite. If he picks up both, he'll be a favorite. No, there's no one, but now he needs a one to save the game. Ace, again. Ace is huge. Maybe. Come on, let's see it. Two more games? Yes! Oh, but Dev, he put two blocks in his board. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. He won't roll over. You wouldn't roll over, would you? No. Wow. But the other thing, like, you, you, you were brilliant. This is going to affect PR. Yeah. Dirk is going to have no decisions, and Mochi's got them all. Yep. I hope. <laughs> Unless that was Look at the PR. Mochi at three and Dirk at 1.25. Ace four. There you go. You don't worry about one six. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Okay, Woo! Now six, you cover, and then you bring it home. There you go. There you go. Gavin's saved. We got more. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm, I, you know what? I'm very happy for Phil. Mochi. I'm feeling for Dirk. Phil. I fe it's my fault. You jinxed the guy. I, it's my Just fault. Like I, I know. Please don't. When Dirk watches this video, he's going to kill He's going to kill me. So in these positions, right? Um, yeah. He's, I mean, he's doing fine. He's going to get off the game. But this reminds me of a story when you say, like, jinxing doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. I remember I used to work at a CD store but like before I, like, right after high school. Uh -huh. in Maine and I remember I was working behind the counter and some lady was checking out a CD because back when CDs were a thing and we both said the same thing at the same time and I looked at her and I said jinx uh -huh. she got super offended oh. and, like got her son over and was like did you jinx my mother oh. I was like, wow, was you're like, in Maine they're not normal people there I go to Maine every summer they, they weren't from Maine they were tourists oh. from some oh, okay some country. I spend uh, I spend about a month every summer at Jason's place up in Maine, and we play backgammon day and night. So I graduated high school in Maine. It is. 
We are, we're in Northeast Harbor, near Bar Harbor. Okay, so what, what are the odds of, 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 uh, of Mochi winning this game? Isn't it, isn't it eight, like eight percent? Yeah. yeah. So this this match could still go to Mochi. He has eight percent after hitting one checker and closing him out with a good Mochi, barrel. Mochi could win this. Yeah, Mochi could win this game. I couldn't. Mochi, now, Mochi now you couldn't. leave the block because if he comes in, you no, want to get in. six off, though. Yeah, yeah they're saying you leave the block. Here's, you play very differently. If, you, if your opponent comes in and you get hit, you have a better chance. You wouldn't leave a double blot though. That's getting a little silly. That's why Mochi played, made, took it off. The funny thing is Mochi was a while <gasps> oh ago. Oh my was, God. Was, was asking for videos on oh. Facebook of people that had gotten hit with all but one checker and oh. then one. He just asked that? Yeah, months ago. Oh my God. But if he fanned there, he had a really good chance. He still got the chance. Well, there's a chance. One, but he one had, double. He had a really good chance. Though. One double. One double Mochi wins this, wins this match. Maybe. The whole thing. Not the whole thing, this match. Oh, oh, my, oh God. my God. Phil, did you teach oh the guy? Oh my God, Dirk, I'm so sorry. He got, got it. Oh <laughs> yes, thank you, God. Thank you. I'm just saying. That Dirk was. I was going to be dead. Dirk no. was going to kill me. You were going to owe him a drink too. Oh my God. You were going to make him start drinking. By oh. the way, <laughs> he was. <he's, laughs> I need a drink now. Oh man. Do you have more exciting finishes than that? What other game has? I mean, I know when you get to the river in poker, it can get very exciting, but. What other game has this? I mean, chess never has anything like this. Bridge doesn't have anything like this. It's unbelievable. Nines, tens, eleven, wow. twelves, huh? Holy cow. Holy cow. That was, that was, now they're both unhappy. That was wild. Dirk is unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> they're both pissed. They're both pissed. <laughs> Dirk, Dirk had the whole thing won. And Mochi didn't win when you win the, the, the whole thing. The They're both unhappy. <laughs> That's what I love about backhand. Everything I used to say, every roll makes somebody happy. I've changed that. Every roll makes somebody unhappy. What a swing! Swings. Crazy. Oh, I, it's going to take me a while to recover from this one. Oh. You know, there's this. I, sometimes you say, "Did I see what I see? Did I actually see that happen?" I can't wait to watch it again. Wow! It, it, oh my! I think I think they'll both be seeing it in their nightmares. I want to see the odds of each thing in each moment. In the meantime, the PRs are holding steady. He has a chance to catch up on PR now that there's more decisions. That's right. So gives him an opportunity to pick up that. Point. Oh, this is, oh, this is incredible! Absolutely incredible. The dice gods, you're so strict. Remember, there's a movie called The Twelve Chairs, and Don D. Luis is at, has gone through hell. He's at the top of a mountain. He says, God, why are you so strict? Why are you dice gods? Well, how can you be this diabolical? I'm sorry if I'm getting too excited. That was really exciting. I can't, I can't hold this down. I've been watching all week, and that was the most exciting finish I've seen yet. Oh my God, I need a breath. Playing in the Estopter tournament is actually quite a bit more relaxing than playing in the UPC. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so much more fun. Plus, how does it feel? To, <laughs> so how does it be to feel, be a favorite instead of an underdog every time you sit at the table? Not that you were an underdog every time you sat in the UPC, but. Far from it, but you're uh, far from it, is right. But, but uh, <laughs> but it, but it's nice to to be a, a, a sizable, yeah, and still lose. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> uh, this is oh, man, wow. Okay, so what's the score? We're at two away, four away, very volatile score, but um, they both have anchors. Uh huh. So Mochi would have doubled very, very early at four away if there were some gambling chances. You have an opening five three. Your opponent splits. It's a it's a double. If you're losing four away two away. But Dirk has that anchor, and he won't be giving it up anytime soon. No, not when you're leading two away four away, and Dirk will not be doubling anytime soon. Bochi's take point is nineteen point eight, and Dirk's take point is twenty. That's the funny number. 
So they both have fairly low take points. Oh, wow. Mochi just ran all the way instead of making the anchor. Wow. And you can see it dinged his PR some. Mochi's playing close to three, and Dirk is at 1.16. Wow. So what happens if um, Dirk wins the match and the PR? It, the score will be six to six. They're going to go. It, uh, the, just, the other matches have been transcribed over over the yeah, dinner break. Yes, yeah. we're all we're all we're right there. It's right now. I want to. Oh wait a minute! It's four to two, isn't it? It's four to two. The score will be four to four. Yeah. Wow. It'll be four to four. Mochi's going into this leading four to two, and so everything will look right on the final match. Sounds exciting for the viewers. For me, my heart. I, need, I hope my heart takes this. Can you take it? Forwarded. Go ahead and hit him. Since you have your 20 point anchor, you're not so worried about getting gamma. So I think it's okay to. He didn't hit. To and hit. Hitting was right. Oh, okay. Wow. You were right, Justin. It's, people have a problem hitting from the eight point when you only have two checkers there and leaving the double shot. But well, I can see why he would be. Uh, nervous about it at the score. You know, he knows he's going to win more if he hits, but he's worried about the gamut cost. Uh huh. But That's a I very, good, one point. Thing. very um, good point. You don't get gamut if you win the game. Really? Yeah. Why didn't somebody tell me that years ago? It's a fact, Phil. You don't get gamut if you win the game. By the way, I say that all the time. I, I, people do don't realize that. That's why they don't realize that when you look like you're getting gamut. That you shouldn't take a big chance because if you win the game, you're not going to get gammon. Very simple. And by the way, I also noticed that you don't lose the game when you don't lose the game if you lose the game. Well, maybe you do lose the game. You know what? You're confusing me now. I haven't said anything. You've been talking to yourself for ages. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you don't lose the game if you win the game. Oh, you don't win a gammon if you lose the game. That's the one. That's that's it. Okay. That's why I don't write books. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm dyslexic. It would feel like leaving Las Vegas or something. Yeah. You know? What's going on on the board? A really, really small double here. Just barely a double and a huge take. Uh, so Mochi sees the blots. This is, I mean... He sees Gammon's chances. He smells what the rock is cooking. Wow, the gammons are only 12%? That shocks me. Because of those blots, I would have thought there's a bigger potential for gammons. Well, if he hits one of them, Dirk could always just... End. Good for Dirk. Good easy some take. Spots. It's a dead cube. That's it. Oh, those aren't his blots. Oh, he's on the roof. Mm -hmm. I, I think I missed all the position yeah. entirely. Yeah. I think I missed all the position. No, you entirely. see that blot? Yeah, I see. It. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about it going the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, the blots are, are good for Dirk. But he doesn't care about winning a game, and when you yeah. only need two points, That's a primal board, you know. Mm -hmm. Five three. Okay, you just come around. Yeah, yeah. Go to the five builders. Yeah. I, no, I, nothing I, hits out there. That's true. That's pretty simple, I think. Hmm. I have no clue. But well, that's typical. I like coming up. I like getting off the twenty-four point. Oh really? It's wrong though. That's that's why it's wrong, because I like it. Well he doesn't want to get hit still, yeah. right? So that must be the reason. It's another one three. This looks pretty simple. You don't have a whole lot of choices here. You want to get out. He'd be, oh my goodness, look at that number. Everything points on him except for numbers that don't have a four or a six on them. Uh huh. Or everything in the states of them, yeah. Right. <laughs> does he get out? He does get out. Now he holds his breath. Ooh. You just keep going. Give them fours. You're gonna break your board. 
Yeah. He needs a four or a ten. That's a nine. That's not four or ten. Back in the driver's seat. Yeah. Got a subs an even game here. You call this an even game? For sure. I'm really curious. I would have thought. Black's down 10 pips. Oh, that's that sounds like an even game. Uh, see the equities. This is why you're better than me. Oh, yeah. Mochi's actually a small favorite. Now he is, now that he made the outside point. Yeah. I'd say this is about an even game. <laughs> 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 sometimes they're really smart. I'm insightful. <laughs> sometimes playing the parrot is the way to play it. Be a parrot, Phil. <laughs> I have my two favorite words in a chouette, me too. I play chouette with Justin and I have whatever he does, I say me too. Hashtag. Six, five. Ooh, do you run now? Looks safe. Actually. Oh, yeah. But he's, oh, it's Mochi. I, I got the wrong guy. I got the wrong guy. I think it would have been good to run there if it was the correct man's yeah. turn. <laughs> yeah. It, Dirk is, if, I thought it was Dirk's. I wish they would play with the baffle box. This, this covers. Oh, is that why you get confused about whose turn it is? Because yeah. every time it's on that side of the board, it could be either player. Right. Okay. That's exactly why I'm confused. I always play with a baffle box. There's two reasons to play with a baffle box. I think it improves the game tremendously, and I sell them. Actually, coming out is close with the two blots, because you're now you're going to cover and you're going to leave blots next time. So that's why it was close. Look at the PRs. Good for Dirk. He's really playing beautifully here. Mochi, I'm sure, is not satisfied with. He doesn't, he doesn't know where he stands yet. You know? Oh, they, they have no idea, but they don't care. They're going to play. The, they're going to play as best that they can anyway. The spot two has to run. By the way, there's just no other play because we don't break our board. When did we break our board, Phil? Uh, only in only in karate class. <laughs> I like that. No wonder you're such a good teacher. You got some great ways to remember things, and I love those kinds of sayings because they will help you remember it. And of course, I wouldn't steal that from you and use it. Yeah, well, it's on stream. They know where they, they, they know where it originated. <laughs> yeah, I said it just a minute ago. Uh, before the stream started. <laughs> to me. No, no, I said it on the screen. I was first. Yeah, yeah. I came up with that. No, no. I also invented O'Hagan's Law and Wolsey's Law. <laughs> Ever since I first said that on stream, like a few years ago, people have like sent me positions when like it's correct to break your board. Yeah. And I go, yeah, I know it's right to break your board here, but in general. <laughs> right. All generalities are false. Yeah, let him know that you're here. Tell uh, Okay, we got action here. Five. Cock dice with a five. That's always fun. Mochi needs a five, he, he rolls it, but he cocks the dice. That doesn't happen when you play online, but he's happy to get a six. He's right in this game. Mochi just missed the key shot, but he came in, which was big. And I think this is about an even game. Nope, Dirk is, Dirk is favored here. So White is on a roll? Uh, yeah, he, he's he's just he hasn't picked up his dice. He hasn't hit the clock. It'll be black on roll after this after his three one. Mochi came out to I mean Dirk came out to minimize shots. He's thinking about the one. I think I lift. Well, there's more pick and pass numbers if he stays there, right? Uh, I think I lift. And oh, with the extra ace, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to. He's got an ace to play. And he does so lift. He's going to get hit with seven. Yeah. And so he had the tens are six, four, and double fives here. 
Let's get to this six five. So oh, this is the right play. I see it now. So this is the right play. Yeah, it's like one less shot, I think, by doing this. No, a couple ones. Okay. It's also if they get into a hitting exchange, you don't want that blot there. That's true. The equity difference is is, uh, is really small. It's yeah, small. It makes sense having it. It's small. But I don't know why you want the blot because you get minimum reduce your shots later. Yeah, this is good. Good play, Dirk. Keep your PR low. Look at that, 1.8. That's low. Oh, it didn't matter. It would have been hit anyway. <laughs> now, do you come out and get seven, sixes? Yes. Keep in mind, Mochi would like to get a gammon here and win the match. If he gets uh, both guys, he... Ooh, he's got some There's chances. Five, uh, five is very good. And the four. Oh, man, maybe you just come down. Yep, plays it big. Yeah. Dirk the needs Chiefs. a five. Oh, five. Mochi's going to make the pointer pick and pass for sure. Oh, big roll. Big roll. Gammons are about 40% now, maybe 42%, something like that. And if he wins a gammon... We don't know where the distribution's going to be. Yeah, that's right. It's far from perfect distribution. So, but it's in the 40% range. Yeah, it is, it is. Because the broken board, I guess, as well, you can play yeah. a bit more aggressively. And, yeah. you, and you're going to play more aggressively because it wins the match. Gammon value is 1.0. I see what you're saying. I'm going to win at 46%. How's that? I believe you. Don't jinx yourself. <laughs> I may have just jinxed Mochi. <laughs> <laughs> he whips it out. He takes those checkers off. I think I gave him that lesson before. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Euripides. And then you got to uh, cross your fingers. Yep. He needs a five. And he Four, gets wow. it. He gets it. Woo. Wow. Oh, what excitement. If he didn't get that, there's pretty good gamut chances here for Mochi to win the whole match. Someone goes, I, I was playing back in in karate class, and it was still wrong to break my board. <laughs> He's wanting to break his back in the board. <laughs> oh, somebody answered the question before I, I even finished my statement. Which is which was? They know the answer only in karate class. Oh, right. that's great. And I and I never heard that because I intentionally tried not to watch your videos. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I'm the only person subscribed to your channel. Oh, well, be nice to me. Well, there's two. There's two. My lawyer. Just to make sure I don't say anything. I actually watch all your videos. Oh, oh come on. I'm make serious. Because <laughs> they're funny for humor. No, no. Because you get great people on to solve the, uh, the yeah. quizzes. You yeah. Know, MCG's was on there recently. That's yeah. Great. And Ito did impress the hell out of it. MCG took nine questions and got all nine right. I mean, that's the first time I can remember that in any of my and, videos. And then you tried to bet stick that you couldn't get more right than, uh, <laughs> than MCG. But I was giving him odds. You were giving him I'm a fair guy. guy. I want you to know I used that bet on somebody at this tournament. <laughs> they were discussing online who they thought was going to win the UBC, right? And uh -huh. uh, this British guy, he goes, um, I think Ryan, because the beginning of the, the format is on the on the computer, uh -huh. he goes, I think Ryan Ravello is going to win the... Uh, <laughs> and you knew, he's, he's you knew going, Ryan wasn't playing. I knew for months Ryan wasn't coming, right? <laughs> and I go, you know what? I'll give you 10 to 1. Ryan doesn't win the UBC. Oh, good He goes, you. Justin, because you're giving me such good odds, I accept your bet. <laughs> Right, and I'm like, okay, I got you. I learned that one from yeah. Phil. You're, you're a jerk. I would have only given seven to one. <laughs> <laughs> you're a great teacher, Phil. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, most of the sleazy bets and fun things I've learned from the experts, from Jake, from uh, Joe Russell, Jim Pasco, <laughs> when it comes to sleazy fun bets and taking advantage of people, those are my, those are my idols. When I built that bet on, on Facebook, somebody messaged me privately and said, is that a Simborg bet? I go, I go, it sure is. I'm so happy to take credit for being a sleazeball. <laughs> Thanks. World's most famous sleazeball in back end. That's me. Uh, I, I so, it. so 14 to 10 is, 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 is right. Um, one of the reasons why you would do this, even though it leaves shots, is that if he enters and doesn't hit you, you have the opportunity to pick and pass on it, uh -huh. which is what you will what you want need to, to do. do. 
Huh. Yeah. So if Dirk just wins the game, the match is over. He's he, gets, he has five guys PR. left if he enters. Yeah. You know, he, could, he could have a hard time. Oh, that is. That's pretty good. Uh, it's an amazing yeah. role. That's pretty good. Another five back? Oh, yes. Okay, so. Yes. This game has more, this match has had more swings than a schoolyard. I love that expression, and it's so true here. Okay, so there's the six. You'd probably move, oh, I don't know, but they says two to one is better. I was told that 11 away is the ideal place yeah, to be. 11, or 12, yeah. 11 away is the ideal place to be. But he's further than that. Jake taught me that 40 years ago. Hi, Jake, if you're watching, I miss you. Wish you were here. I was going to come out, but yeah, okay. I mean, Mochi found the best play pretty quickly, so I'll have to ask him later why. I was thinking about getting coverage over numbers like 5-1 and 4-2. And... Yeah, Dirk is more concerned with getting a shot than getting by because he's losing with those five checkers off. So he, he stayed to get the maximum shots. He did pretty good. He's going to have 14 numbers there, or 15 numbers. And he did it again. He did it again. I mean, he rolled some something good for a miss. I actually thought he hit him. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to be a two away, two away, unless uh, Dirk does, the, or did I just jinx Mochi? I love the, I love it in a shoeet where I score it before the end of the game. It drives Carter nuts. It drives Jason nuts. It drives me nuts. It drives, oh, then, probably got to be sure and do it with you too then. I'm going to score this one. <laughs> okay, all of you good players know that a two away, two away, you double immediately. Somebody goes, amazingly, a backgammon match broke out during a comedy routine. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking too much about the match? I don't know. Who's on first? Yeah. I strongly recommend that a two away, two away, Crawford kicks in and there's no cue for the rest of the match. I know that lengthens the match, but think about how much more interesting the game would be if you, you played from here with no cue. It would be a much better match. All right, double. He does. He listened to me. Am I smart or what? I can't believe he took that cue. <laughs> His take point's 32%, so I think he had maybe a little more than that. you got to really, really love the way Dirk has played this match. Playing under two. It's been a long day. It's been a long week. He's been sick. He hasn't slept well. And these are not excuses. This is just what, what he's doing. I think you just run off the anchor, actually. You're not going to give the guy a double shot. You don't need the anchor at DMP, really, right? So you're just trying to make the play that's going to win. Uh -huh. Couldn't see many other plays other than going 13-11. He gets well. I'm hitting. I'm hitting because you got him so outboarded and a blot out there. And he did. And it was right. There's the three. And Big the hit one back. Hits. One is forced. Uh, I have no clue on the six. I should probably play down there. Down. And you're right. Damn. I would just play from the stack. Wow. That was third on my list. Very nice, Justin. It's just a very DMP sort of play, you know? I didn't know what that means. Oh, my bad. I mean, I understand DMP, you're supposed to race. The rest of it, I don't understand. I know. I understand you're supposed to make the big play at the end. But in the middle like that, I don't know what a DMP play is. You're going to have to teach me that. It's the play that just wins the most games, right? Ah, okay. So now I'm thinking you. about Gems won or Gems lost, like what play is actually going to win you the most games? I and mean, then one guy just has one guy back, and you've got three guys back already. The cost of getting hit again is a lot lower, right? So I think about it like this sometimes, right? If you're just a couple and you don't have any kids and you go from, one, from zero kids to one kid, it's a huge life change, right? Changes mm -hmm. everything. You go from one kid to two kids, 
it's a bigger change, but you're already adjusted to having one kid. You go from two to three guys back or from two kids to three kids. The impact is less on your life because you've already got two kids. This is priceless. You go from three to four, from four to five, from six to seven. You can invite the neighbors over for dinner. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. You've already prepared. You're already preparing food for an army. This is worth the price of admission. Thank so, you. So I think about it like this, right? If I have one guy back, right? If I have no men back and I get hit, and I now have a guy back, it's a dramatic change for my position, it's terrible. Oh. If I have one guy back already, and now I have two guys back, okay, it, it, it really is still a big change, but from three to four, from four to five, all of a sudden you have six guys <laughs> back, you're in a back game, and you want more back, That's right? That's beautiful. A lot of my students said they like taking lessons from me because I had some humor and some things that help them remember. I, I think I was one of the, I, I'm now taking second place to you. I'm gonna learn from you how to teach. Because these kinds of stories, that's what helps you remember what's right. And these, it, those kinds of life analogies are the best. That was wonderful. That was worth the price of the ticket to Istanbul. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, it. that was wonderful. All right. Are they still playing? They are. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mochi, time to close them out. Not Justin, with a five four. Justin is assuming same mother. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? I <laughs> Who said that? Tom Hansen. Oh, that's cute. Geez, that you got me there. That was cute. That, that was, was great. That was great. That was great. Oh, big shot here. That was very, very big for Dirk. Woo! And he needed that. He needed that shot. That shot could change. His life. <laughs> Legit. This is a life changing hit. Woo! Dirk wins this game and wins the PR and wins the match, and it goes to a tie to the last seven, match. Yeah. Oh my God. And I want to stream. No, he doesn't. He comes off with both. Okay. I, I want to see what happened with, wow. with ZZ and Dagfrom, but I, I certainly want to stream this one again. Oh, he made my play. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I would just go for this and then get off when I can afterwards, you know? Mochi's glad to come in. That gives him some life. A six here, and you can kiss a lot of this goodbye. No! Oh. He had a hit. Okay. Mochi! He needs an ace. Mochi! Ace. Mochi! Ace four. Woo! Where's the four? <laughs> Where's the four? Look at those. They're I, tied. Six to two hey, and eight to four. I just make the DMP play. It's true. I don't know what it was, though. Oh. <laughs> oh big play for Dirk. On the one game rollout, slotting the four was better. <laughs> yeah. Mochi needs a one. Nope. Oh, somebody complimented the board. It's a nice board. The Galaxy guys appreciate that. The, they're nice. They make a great board. It's an FM makes them. It, it, it's an incredible board. I'm very proud to help. I helped design them. He helped start the company. And somewhere I still have the number two board they ever made. It was a gift for my help. Could have given me something more, but that was a <laughs> 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 Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> one, much less one six. One four. Back in and until the end. I played with a guy for years who would never give you a one six because he got burned on it once. He never give you the one six. Really? I played with him twice, two, three times. Bill Bartholomew, great guy, very famous guy. He owned the Atlanta Braves, but he got hit with a one six and never gave it again. Wow. Yeah. Big mistake. Oh, double fours. Wow. Whoa, double fours. Actually, I don't know how he did that. Is he is some slight cracking chances here? Not too much. Not too much. Oh, one do you three. hit? Yeah, if you find a way to hit, I okay, would hit. I, I'm telling you, I'm hitting. Mochi doesn't care about getting hit. They both have no idea about the PRs, so they don't care. All you do care about is making the right place every time and trying to win.
the primal board is available for sale yeah. on backgammongalaxy.com by the way if you're interested mm -hmm. as soon as this match is done i'm gonna run and tell me to play immediately because uh because i want to get to sleep who's gonna go play <laughs> matt mcg what are you talking about i'm going to, i'm gonna go in and tell these guys Oh, to play their fifth play, match. I want to play the next match immediately because I want to get some sleep. I think I think they want to get some sleep too. Right? <laughs> yeah, they'd rather have a little break, I think. And I'm not sure. It's not my call whether they stream it or not. It's Mete's call. Yeah. Which of the final matches we stream? And I don't know if there is another match. I'm gonna go with right the here. I know that much. I owe you one. You do? For, for, oh, for those two stories that you gave me. Well, sign me up. I like you. Yeah. Make sure it's a light beer, though. They, uh, uh, greetings they're... from Santiago, Chile. I've been there before. Do they play backgammon out there? One of my best friends was born in Chile. You, you know a guy named Blake Fleetwood? Of course. I know. I'm kidding. He's, I know he's a good friend of yours, too. Yeah. I play with him all the time. He's born in Chile. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that about my, my Blake. Yeah. His, his, his mom and dad were both doctors and immigrated to the United States. We won the uh, doubles event in Cambridge together one year. Uh -huh. One of my dearest friends. I love the man. We played at his house last time I was in uh, New York. Mm -hmm. Was that his place? I'm living at no. his house. Oh, yeah. I live at his house. I'm going back there next week. I was there last week. I live at his house in New York. His apartment. I throw oh, wow. Him. He does not want numbers like six. No! Okay. This very, very yeah. dangerous yeah. position. That position was way too Very far. dangerous position, yeah. Woo. Against an ace point game, you do not really want a bunch of checkers yeah. on the deuce point like that. The good news for Dirk, though, is Mochi's board has crashed. Wow. Well, look at these PRs. Dirk is going to tie it up. We're going to have one match to determine whether it's Dirk or Mochi that goes to the finals tomorrow. Again, tomorrow we're going to start at 10 a.m. Istanbul time, and we're going to keep going. We, I'm sure we'll have a break for lunch sometime and dinner sometime. Oh, shot time. No, there's not, there's no, that's not a shot. Double twos? It's not a shot no, unless you no, hit it. Okay. Wow. I was only calling for double twos for the fans, you know? I understand. No favoritism here. One and then three. Is there a stack checker there? Are there? There's a bunch of checkers on that. Oh, one, yeah. I yeah. I don't know how many, though. I don't either. It shouldn't be legal to stack checkers. Well, the boards can't be 20, 20 meters long. Yeah. Though. Uh, are there just three you should left? unstack them though when there's five yeah five or less well that's dirk's game then it's over it's over and we're going to have a one match one seven point match to determine which of these two folks goes forward looks like we're tied folks wow stay tuned i will let you know we're scheduled for the next match it's supposed to start in one minute and it ain't going to happen probably in about a half an hour and i cannot honestly tell you whether we're going to have uh, ZZ and Dagfin or these two, uh, why don't we let everybody vote? <laughs> I don't think there'd be a question. Wow, not, the, not nothing against ZZ and Dagfin, but they've been watching Mochi and Dirk. That one game, wow, that was really exciting. All right, we're going to take a little break. We're going <laughs> to. Oh, everybody shaking the dice at once. At hold the that, beginning of the tournament. Hold that up, to the, hold that up oh, to the screen. Funny, hold that up to the screen. They had everybody at the beginning of the tournament shakes their dice at the Easter return. You can see it on my on my story but, on uh, Shop by Justin these guys on, on Instagram. Okay. If you want to see it, Shop by Justin I want to, I want to show it to our stream fans. I don't know if I can. Pretty closer. There you go. Everybody shaking the dice. Yeah. And then they roll. Okay, Shop by Justin. Thank All you, right. Justin. It was, they said after this match we can't switch. Everybody wants to know the results, how it how it ends. I mean, I hear you. I hear you. We don't have control over that. Um, but <coughs> I, I will be where Mochi and Dirk are, even if I am following.